Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you for the ASIC conference, which provides us a platform to be able to put across our points to over a thousand principles at one go. What I'm going to do today is just briefly show you the statistics. I'm not going to read that through, but focus on the changes in the syllabus that are coming about and the change in the pattern of the question papers that will be there for the forthcoming 2018 examinations. As far as the council is concerned and the ISC examination is concerned, it is the school leaving examination. And we want the students who have completed the ISC to emerge as young, confident youth who are able to take their place in institutions of their own choice. And towards that end, what we do is to constantly review the syllabuses to make sure that they are contemporary and meeting the requirements of the candidates and also to ensure that a sound knowledge base is being developed for the candidates. Just a brief overview now of the number of uh, schools that presented candidates for the year 2017 and those schools that were allotted examination centers and the increase in number for the forthcoming 18 examination, the schools which have been allotted centers and those presenting candidates. You can see that our numbers are growing. Thank you. And this is for the 18, and as we move on to the 19 examination, where we have completed the registrations, again, you can see an 8 to 9% increase in the number. <laughs> Talking of the rechecks, uh, one of the things, the new initiatives that have taken place this year have been the students have been enabled to apply for recheck directly on the portal. This definitely has reduced the burden on the heads of the schools. And we can see from the numbers, you can see from the numbers here that maximum requests have been received on the portal and not really through the school. So this is one big change. And as Mr. Fuller explained to you, as in when our press conference is on and we are announcing the results, simultaneously we start receiving the request for recheck and the process commences then and there. We start immediately pulling out the answer scripts and start calling experts to start going through so that it is done at the earliest convenience of the students because we are aware that they are waiting to take admissions into colleges. The next uh, is the centers of centralized marking. We try to have maximum centers of centralized evaluation. As of now, for the 18 exam, we have 259 centers, but we are still making more. As soon as we have about four to five examiners available in a particular city, we make a center in that specific city. We've also put down on the in the presentation, you can see the meetings for centralized marking where they're taking place. The meetings are more than the number of host schools because in one particular school, you could have meetings for many subjects. As we did for ICSC, the same happened uh, for ISC. Four schools in Darjeeling where due to the unrest, we extended the dates for the submission of the center arrangements, eligibility, registration, confirmation of entries, etc. When I'm talking of the changes in the syllabus and the pattern of question papers, it has to be supplemented with providing training to the teachers so that they are in a position to teach the students accordingly. And hence, we've had a number of training programs that were organized in Delhi, Calcutta, Indore, Jamshedpur, Kochi, and Bangalore. In fact, we had to repeat our training programs in Delhi and Kolkata. Uh, we have talked about the apportionment of answer scripts and the fact that the centers having more than 40 examiners are distributed between more examiners in order to have parity in the number of scripts being given to each examiner. 
We continue to face a shortfall. And you can see the figures here. So I would like to request all of you present here, our major shortfall being for English, the science practicals and physical education and art, please do nominate your examiners. It will help us. And the moment we have more examiners, less would be the number of days your teachers would be away from schools. You would have seen for some of the subjects, uh, like biology, we've only given them 60, 70 scripts to evaluate. And within a period of four to five days, the teachers are back in school. So if we have that kind of a number available, nobody will miss the teachers being away for their short duration. Hence, it's a request. Please don't stop at nominating just one or two teachers from your school. Nominate them from all subjects. It's a learning exercise for them. In addition to that, it is also mandatory. And Mr. Arathun has emphasized that next year onwards, we will be selecting the examiners ourselves from the portal. Uh, coming to the syllabus now, as you're aware, we are open to students opting for any subject of their choice. They can choose from the basket of subjects, they can choose the offering, and it could be from across various streams. It doesn't have to be limited to the science stream or the humanities of the commerce. They can opt for subjects based on their interests. However, they have to keep the requirements of the course that they wish to pursue in college in mind while they are opting for these subjects. Every year at this platform, we used to be asked whether we are in sync with the other boards in the country when it comes to the science syllabi and, if, and whether it was impacting the performance of students in the entrance exams. You saw from Ms. Arathun's presentation the performance of our students for the JE entrance exams and how well they've done throughout the country. Also, another request had been that if we have parity between the flow of the subjects and the topics across various boards in the country, it will facilitate students who are attending extra classes. Keeping that in mind, and also by attending the various meetings called by the MHRD and the meet for the Common Core Curriculum. Certain changes have been made in the syllabuses of physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. A long-standing request had also been that whether we could show the marks allocated to the topics, which would help the students who are perhaps not aiming to get the 100, but would know what to focus on in order to do reasonably well in the examinations. We've done that. What we've done now for these subjects, we have allocated marks to various topics. So you would be able to know how much each topic is worth in terms of weightage of marks, and the teachers can tell the students and help them focus accordingly. Another change in the pattern Another change in the pattern has been that every question has become compulsory. See, everything comes with a pros and a con. When you want marks allocated to each topic, that means you're going to be testing and they need to know every single topic. However, in order to, for the students who are just aiming to pass the examinations, they can very well know the weightage and prepare accordingly. By making sure that the entire content is covered in the question paper, it definitely discourages selective study for our bright students, and hence, they will be better prepared to face the entrance examinations. So I'll take you through the change in the rubrics of the question paper now for the forthcoming 2018 examination. Starting with physics, we have the units have been re rearranged for classes 11th and 12th. The scope again has been reviewed and made more explicit. We have given the unit-wise weightage. And you can see the specimen paper, which has been put up on the website, and glimpses of which we'll show you now, that there is a change format. It's compulsory to answer the questions, though some questions will have internal choices. The paper. 
He would go back to it. The paper has been designed in a manner in which it is covering all the topics of the syllabus in a comprehensive manner, dealing with questions on recall, understanding, application, analysis, and evaluation. So it's not just recall, it is preparing them for future and to make them aware that they need to understand, they need to be able to understand and apply the information. You can see the breakup of marks for the topics and the units. You could see that electronic devices has a weightage of eight in communication systems two and how the weightage is spread out and accordingly the students can prepare. As far as the practicals are concerned, for the year 2018 examination, we will continue to have the practical papers externally assessed. The papers will come to us, they will be externally assessed. The project work carries 10 marks and the practical files carry five. From the year 2019, the change will be for the sciences, it will be the same as is done for the computer science papers, wherein we would send you the question papers and set the date of the examination. Uh, the evaluation would be done by the visiting examiner on site. To give you an idea of what the rubrics of the paper would be, we put a comparative for you for the year of 17 and the year 18. Can we have a look at that? The rubrics of the question paper in 17. Answer all questions in part one and 10 questions from part two, where there was an external choice. They had to choose four out of six questions from section A three out of four from section B, and three out of four from section C. If you look at the 18 rubrics now, you could get an idea as to what the students will be facing when they, look at, when they go to attempt their board papers. And again, all of this information has been available since a very long time on our website. Next one. To show you the specimen question paper, you can see the rubrics have been clearly spelled out, available on your website. I would request you, if those of you who were not aware of that, once you go back, please tell your teachers about it, let them look at it, and the students also could access the website and have a look. The same goes for chemistry. I'm going to quickly go through, I think we'll just go through the slides that gives you an idea of the changes in the syllabus that have taken place. Again, we have the mark breakup. You could have a look at the rubrics again, what was there in the year 2017 and what will be coming for the 2018 examination, the rubrics of the paper. And the sample paper which is available on our website. Coming to biology. We have our rationale for the changes that took place. <coughs> the weightage of marks unit-wise. The mark breakup for practicals for, uh, for the 18th exam remains the same. Again, the sample paper. Coming to mathematics. 
Now, if you look at mathematics, there are certain, uh, while we've aligned ourselves with that of the other national boards as per the requirement of MHRD, yet we've chosen to retain our identity and that we have continued to give an option to students between section B and C. The commerce stream students seem to do well with the section C and while the other boards have amalgamated the two, we continue to provide them that option and this works to the benefit of all the students. In fact, one of the questions being asked and we have some questions was whether it is necessary for the science students to opt for section B only. The answer is not, it isn't. They can opt for either B or C, but it would definitely be beneficial for them to study section B because all the entrance examinations, the JEE, uh, the IIIT, they all require questions from section B. Again, the breakup of marks is given. Uh, mathematics, the result, we had a lot of problems this year and I think the maximum grace marks had to be given for the subject mathematics. We will not be in a position to do the same this year. It's been explained to you very clearly by Mr. Aratun. And I think showing you this mark breakup is going to be a big help. So I would request you to share this with your mathematics teacher. We are not in, in any position to give out the kind of grace marks this year that we had to do last year. The rubrics. and the sample paper. No. <coughs> yeah. Now for the subject English, this change will come into effect from the year 2019. So I'd like to clarify, for the sciences, it's 2018. For English, it's coming into effect from the year 2019. For English, paper one, You could see the changes that have taken place. The weightage for essays has been reduced from 30 to 25. A new aspect, report writing has been introduced. Uh, proposal writing has been introduced because this is something which students as they move out into the world, they need to be using that in their workplaces and they need to be given this exposure. So we reduced the essay marks from 30 to 25 and brought in an element of proposal writing, which is fairly simplistic in nature. It just has to have the topic, the major points, and what needs to be done. Just three points in the proposal writing. This is a glimpse of the sample paper, also available on our website. English paper two also, uh, one of the statements that used to come to us apart from the change in the books which uh, uh, Mrs. Gupta has taken you through, these are the changes in the books, apart from that there's a change in the pattern of the question papers. The change that has been brought about has been again keeping the interest of students in mind, those who are not able to write a full 20 mark question. One choice has been provided in each question wherein we have split it into three parts, the subparts being eight, six, and six. So those who prefer to write a long answer have a choice of writing a 20 mark answer, and for the others, there's a choice of attempting an eight, six, six. This is the specimen paper for English paper two, also available on our website. Having said all that, and having discussed the sample papers with you, the change in the rubrics, etc., we realize that sometimes it's not possible for the teachers to come to our training programs and be there. The number of seats are limited, and they do fill up fast. So we wanted a way to reach out to the teachers and to the students, and we made an attempt to create videos for these four subjects. 
Now, this has been a maiden attempt at our part. Over a period of time, we will be doing more to develop them better and to create more inputs into that. But this was about an hour, an hour and a bit for each subject, which gives an understanding of the change that is there in the syllabus, the rubrics, and we've also gone on to explain the marking scheme. This we thought, again, keeping in mind, uh, we've talked about moderation, we've talked about grace marks, and the need to do away literally with both. So it's important that the students understand the marking scheme, what kind of questions would be there. The teachers are familiarized with the content and the specific questions and how they are to be attempted, how the marks would be attempted, how the marks would be awarded for that. So we'll just give you a glimpse of our videos. You could just have a look at that. class 11, followed by the changes in class 12. In addition, the changes in the rubrics of the question paper will also be explained. Lastly, the sample question paper along with the suggested marking scheme will be discussed. I will now take you through physics theory specimen question paper with marking scheme. Section 8 consists of 12 marks, very short question answers and Five marks are MCQ and seven marks, very short questions, which have to be answered in brief. First question. Our subject. Question number one. Fill in the blanks by choosing the appropriate word or words from those given in the brackets. Both CCP and HCP are efficient closed packing and occupy 74% of the available space. Question number one, part one. A binary operation star defined on Q minus one is given by A operation B is equal to A plus B minus AB. Find the identity element. So applying the property of identity element with the binary operation star a operation a is equal to a e operation a is equal to a a first mark is awarded and writing answer e equal to 0 with the justification a is not equal to 1 a second mark is awarded answer the following question briefly and to the point first question name the most common motile sport of fungi the answer, there is only one answer, zoo spores. Coming to the second part, state the chromosome number in the endosperm of onion. Now since onion has 16 chromosomes, endo... Um, this was just to give you a glimpse of the videos that have been prepared and they are now uploaded. They are also there on YouTube for everyone to view. So as you can see, we are doing our best and attempting to make sure that we are providing the necessary information to the schools. But we can't work in isolation. We need cooperation and support from you. And towards that end, we will progress and achieve greater heights with your cooperation. Thank you.